One. Right, we're recording this. We're not rehearsed because I hate rehearsing stuff. And actually, I never really rehearse anything we do. So, um, because I think it's, yeah. So, just trying to explain a little bit about, you asked me how the batteries work because we've got a demonstration set up here. You probably just saw the video and Clement was translating. Um, but try to understand what it's doing and how the use is of, why would you use the inverter for? Basically, why does anybody use an inverter? Three reasons. <laughs> three fingers <laughs> on. Three reasons. You only use three. Reasons. To use an inverter, you have three absolutely major uses. There's lots of other uses, but three absolute major uses. First of all, um, if you haven't got any electricity at all, you're off grid. You haven't got power. And so if you haven't got power, then you're going to be using your whatever. Your apart, your well, be an apartment. <laughs> you put your your, your, your your sort of cabin or whatever it is, or it could be a house. But you've got no electricity, and you're off grid, and you need electricity. So that's the first thing you need an inverter. So you have your battery, and you're going to run your house or your cabin or anything or your boat off a battery. But the next thing is is how to charge the battery. So you can run everything off the battery. The battery can power from the inverter. The inverter creates AC but how to charge the battery. So simple way, basically the most obvious way that everyone says solar panels. So you put your solar panels up and the solar panels charge your battery. Or you could use a generator. So the generator may be running, not all the time, but maybe some of the time and it will charge the battery up. And then you can run the battery for the rest of the time. And that's a very simple way. The second application that you would use a battery for um, and it could be used for what they call UPS, uninterrupted power supply, emergency power. Now that might be, uh, for example, your building here. So if there's a power outage, power cut, load shedding, whatever they call it, different countries. What do they call it in France? Is it the power go? Is it? Coupure de courant. Right, okay. Okay, this is my French. I didn't understand that, okay. But if, you, if it happened, then the inverter can continue the power. So it's uninterrupted power supply. You connect to the load connection on the inverter, not the grid connection, the load connection, and that will give you a UPS. You, similar to on a UPS, you could also use, if you haven't got enough energy, so for example, your fuse is only a uh, 50 amp fuse and you want to pull more power than what your fuse can, like a car charger, the inverter can supply the extra power. So either UPS or you haven't, so you haven't got, if you want your safety or you haven't got enough power, the inverter can save. And of course, the third point is we can save money. People want to use it to save money. So if you're going to use it to save money, there's two ways you do it. The most common way, of course, is the best way, a solar panel. So I've got two pens. This is a, a pink one and a black one. Let's try, I'll try the black one to see if the black one works. So, so we've got a solar array. So this, this symbol here is the, my drawing is terrible. This is the symbol for solar panel. We connect the solar panel in what the Americans call a string. So maybe you can explain this to this in French, which is all in series, like that. So if each panel is 40 volt, And then obviously we're going to get 160 volt here. It's probably not enough. You may need more panels, but very simple. They're in series. The panels are wired in series. So the panels will connect to the inverter. Okay, that's the symbol for an inverter, DC and AC. Okay, so there's the this sort of basic symbols you use. The inverter, in our inverter, also connects to a battery. And then... Okay, it's a battery, so 48 volts. Okay, and then here, this connects to your grid. Mm -hmm. And here we put in the CT coil. And here is my load. So this makes normal uses. This is using for non-essential loads. If it was essential loads, I'd wire it a little bit differently. But for normal circumstances. So what's going on is what you want to do is as you generate power, and I'm going to use the pink colour, as during the daytime, the sun is shining, the sun is shining, 
<laughs> okay, it's not very good, <laughs> on the solar panel. And during, as your day goes in, you're gonna get this sort of thing happening, shh, like that. And during the, during the peak period when you're gonna generate sun. Your load, what you're drawing, may be actually more like this. That is your load, the mm -hmm. power you're using. Now, actually, uh, that's not particularly very good because it would drop, but your load is there and it will drop right way below. And here maybe there's here maybe the zero line. Okay. So this is zero, this is zero. It's a crossover line. So here, here, this period here, you've got your sun is generating power and you're running on solar. If you've got a normal type inverter, what they call a string inverter, grid tide inverter. During this period, it will export the power back to the utility, which is not particularly clever nowadays because the energy you get from the utility is very low. So we're exporting it to the utility. But what we do is this excess power here. So this is the excess power that you're generating. This is what you're using. And during the period, you've got this extra power here. Okay? Mm. That extra power will go into mm -hmm. the battery. Okay. The extra power. So only the extra. So the power you would have wasted, the wasted energy would have gone into the battery. And that's the only, the, so most of the, the power from here during the daytime, if you're using it, your refrigerator, and you've got lights, if it's an office, you use it. But the stuff that you're not going to use, the extra power goes in into the battery here. And that's, that's where you're going to save the money. Okay. Because when the light, when the sun goes down, you carry on using the power until you reach a certain level and the battery is finished and you wait to charge it again. Yeah. And if you're very clever and you have a big enough array, you might have enough of it to carry all night and you might not use any power if you're lucky enough to have a big enough area and you've got your balancing and you've got all LED bulbs and everything's really low consumption and you might manage. And I can tell you, even in the UK, I know people that can do that. Certainly in South Africa, people could do it all the time. And, and in, in Australia, it's easily done because they've got more sun hours. But here, you just basically, it's the difference of that energy will go into the battery. So you prioritize, you would always set your solar panel prioritized to the load. What you don't want to do is charge the battery up from the grid because you just waste, you just said exactly what uh, Fred said, it wastes energy. Smart is exactly it, you waste it. So you never, ever, ever in that circumstance you charge the battery from the grid. You only charge the battery from the excess that you're generating and you don't need a particularly big battery. So in this type of application, the battery itself doesn't need to be so big. It can be a little, it'd be a smaller battery, but you're capturing it, but you're not gonna use that much power because nowadays, most houses, you, you light, you, you run your, your heavy stuff maybe during the day or whatever, but you don't need that much power and that power should carry you through. So on this scenario here, we'll just put this on the, on the setup here, we've got a 5.2 kilowatt hour battery and a 3.67 kilowatt inverter is probably perfect so that's, your, that's, that's basically it. So your panels into your inverter, your inverter to the battery. So the excess power, this bit here will go to the battery. And then afterwards, this will discharge. Our inverter is, but it could go both ways. Now, there is one thing I'm missing. There is another way to save money. This is using the solar panel. This all works perfectly. But if you're on some special tariff, so if you've got an electric vehicle and you get cheap tariff at night time and maybe between say, uh, I don't know, between two o'clock and four o'clock or two o'clock and five o'clock, then your electricity price goes yeah. down because you're gonna charge your electric car. And some of them have these, and, and I don't know in France, but I think maybe you must have similar. Yeah. But, and it, these tariffs will certainly, can, because what it's all about is balancing the grid. The utilities have to balance the grid. And during certain time, because the expensive time is between sort of four o'clock and seven o'clock is when electricity prices go very, very expensive. Because a lot of people come home, they cook in a dinner, they boil the electric kettle, they put the cooker on, and so the demand goes right up for those period. So if, you, if you've got some smart system, you might choose additionally at a certain time at night to charge the battery. You might be paying very, you might be paying, I don't know, 10 cents euro 
to or you know and to charge the battery it's worth it so you can you can judge yourself you say right okay i get enough power off my solar array and i just want to put a little bit more at night and i've got enough for the whole day so you can judge it so you'll save money so there's two ways to save money i personally for my own house i would do exactly just use off-peak electricity I'm going, you know, the electricity prices are crazy and they're going to go even more crazy and this this business is absolutely crazy you know and i worry personally for my own house for the electricity costs and everybody's going to be in the same position mm. so i don't know this is basically what i'm trying to explain so yes three uses save money your solar charge your battery the excess goes into the battery use it at night use it ups um, if you need power, if you if you say if you say you may have one of these um, Bitcoin mining rigs and it's going to run all the time, then you would use a UPS, use it for that, or you might be for a hospital or a clinic or something like that. Mm. Um, or you've got no power, and I think I've showed an example on the thing, which is a mobile extra X-ray machine in, in a vehicle. We talk about we talk about vehicles. We talk about using power on work sites. They've got no power, so they they can come along and they've got batteries full and they can use the energy. All the clothes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they're the three major uses of using an inverter. And of course, you know, it can go on and on and on. But principally, it's UPS or not enough power. It's save money. Um, so that you basically have the th your, th your three things always. It's always that. Uh, is there anything you want to ask us? No, it's clear. <laughs> Are it's you sure? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's more clear with the draw. <laughs> My drawing is terrible. No, no, no but uh, you can major. explain in French now. You explain in French. Come here. You can. You can have the French side. Donc là, on peut voir qu'on a mis quatre panneaux de, de 40 volts en série, donc qui se con connectaient à l'onduleur, avec en DC qui est transformé en courant continu, en AC. Donc là, on a les ba la batterie qui est ici, donc sur du 48 volts, qui va donc durant, là on a la période de, de soleil, donc là c'est notre consommation, là c'est la production d'énergie grâce aux panneaux solaires. Donc là on voit qu'on a de, de l'énergie en plus, qu'on va venir stocker pour recharger la batterie, et euh, durant euh, la nuit, si on a une utilisation pour un réfrigérateur, euh, ou tout congélateur ou autre, on va pouvoir utiliser du... Donc, Comme on n'a plus d'électricité avec les panneaux solaires, on va pouvoir utiliser la batterie pour alimenter directement dans le réseau. Donc là, on peut voir qu'en connexion, on a donc soit les panneaux solaires, soit on est connecté au réseau. Donc ça peut aussi fonctionner avec les tarifs euh, EDF, heure creuse. heure creuse et heure pleine. Donc avec des, des heures creuses la nuit, on va pouvoir recharger euh, aussi la batterie. Après, c'est juste une, une question de réglage dans les paramètres de, de l'onduleur pour pouvoir alimenter euh, notre réseau donc le réseau est ici là on est sur donc le réseau électrique donc de Bonjour, alimenté par la, par la ville et voilà c'est tout simple après avec trois possibilités donc soit un usage euh, continu soit après sur un usage plus dans l'urgence, si on a une coupure électrique, donc pour les hôpitaux, euh, les, les serveurs, tout ça, où on a besoin d'électricité con, continue. Donc là, on va utiliser les batteries. Dès qu'on a une coupure, on va utiliser la batterie pour, avoir, euh, pour continuer à pouvoir euh, utiliser les services. Et après, on peut aussi utiliser un générateur donc qui va recharger la batterie. Une fois que la batterie est pleine, va pouvoir... Euh, donc ça, c'est plus pour les pays africains où on, a, on va pouvoir donc recharger la batterie. Une fois que la batterie est pleine, le générateur va se, va se couper et on va utiliser la batterie directement. Perfect. One thing, one thing, Clement, let me show you something. Is which you, if you click on the bar chart here, you see exactly what we drew, and then we have a very nice flow chart, and you can see it all there what we drew. Donc là, on peut retrouver exactement le dessin que Case a fait. Donc avec les panneaux solaires. Les MPB, MPBT. MPBT, yes. Yeah. Là, c'est l'onduleur. Non, l'inverteur est ici. Yeah. Là, l'onduleur est ici. Donc là, on a le réseau. Là, on a l'UPS. Là, on a l'auxiliaire. Et là, on a les batteries qui se rechargent. Donc, l'énergie vient des panneaux solaires ou du réseau pour pouvoir recharger la batterie ou l'usage de, 
de l'usage quotidien des, des appareils. So, in fact, on this one, you see the arrow pointing towards the battery because we're actually charging the battery up off the AC at the moment. So the power is coming from here and it's coming out of the inverter into the battery. And normally, if, we, if the solar panel would prioritize to the load, so there'd be an arrow here. But because it's not running at the moment, there's oui, no arrow. Oui, parce qu'on n'a pas mis de... Là, normalement, donc l'énergie vient des panneaux solaires. Mais là, comme nous n'avons pas connecté de, de panneaux solaires, il y a uniquement le, le réseau électrique qui, qui, qui alimente. Donc du coup, ça recharge les batteries par le, par le réseau électrique. So I hope I, I can't know. <laughs> my, my French is not great. I know a few words in France, French, but that's it. But thank you, Clément, for explaining it. Um, and uh, we move forward, and we can tomorrow we can do on site. We're doing we're going in the van, and we can we'll show a little bit more on the vehicle and that. So brilliant. Merci. Si vous avez la moindre question, ben n'hésitez pas à nous envoyer un message. On se fera un plaisir de, de vous répondre. Merci beaucoup. Merci.